What? Ah! Mm. Mm. What is it? <laughs> ah! Ooh, whatever. Start all over the place. Diamond blom blom. I liked it. Hey guys, what up? Mariam here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing some of the latest makeup releases, talking you through all these new products and find out whether they are good or not. I'm going to be doing all the work for you so that you don't have to. This is going to be kind of like a first impressions chatty, fun little video. And of course, I'm going to do a makeup look as well. So I hope you are as excited as I am. Let's get into this video. New makeup releases. Here we come. Just disinfected my hands after touching the Trendwood box. I probably should have opened up the box first and then disinfected my hands. <laughs> okay, let's let's try again. So first and foremost, we have this new Trend Mood box from my girl Trend Mood, AKA Sophie. I haven't opened this up yet. I'm gonna do this right here on camera and let's see what do we have here. Oh, oh, a lot of stuff, you guys. You've got a first ever machine washable makeup sponge. What? That sounds crazy. We have the makeup eraser, the original pink. I have actually never used this, but I'm excited to try this out later. We have Nabla Miami Lights Glitter Palette. We have Eye Duty Niacinamide Brightening Cream. I hope I pronounced that right. I really am not sure, but it's from First Aid Beauty. We got some Lily Lashes in Miami. I love those. Got some lip balms from Milani. We have the At Lashed Marc Jacobs Lifting and Volumizing Mascara. I do like this one. We've got a power liner from Lily Lashes, and we have the Secret Palette from Nabla Cosmetics. Cool. I'm gonna disinfect my hands one more time. Well, let me just look up this Trend Mood box real quick, you guys. Alexa, read me the notification. One new notification from Amazon Shopping. A shipment has arrived, including skincare, the ultimate no-nonsense guide. Oh my God, that's my girl, Caroline Hiron's book, you guys. It just arrived, I'm so excited. Support your friends, you guys. Support your friends, buy their books, buy their products, read their blogs, like their posts. So the Trend Mood box is now offering its volume six box, which is the one that I just showed you guys. Okay, so I see two different prices. There's one that is 62 and then there's another one that is 39. The one that I have in front of me, the one that I just opened up, seemed like it would be a $62 one because there was a lot of products, but you know, you know what? I'm gonna find out the price. I'm gonna text Sophie and I'm gonna pop it up right here for you guys so that we are all in the know. First thing that I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna reach for this Catrice Baking and Setting Loose Powder. I think you've seen me use this one before. I do like Catrice powders. They are very nice. I'm a fan. And today I'm doing the powder under foundation method just cause. I'm just gonna apply that to the center of my face, my forehead, in between my brows, nose, the usual areas that I like to mattify before I apply my foundation. Boom, boom. Next thing I'm gonna do is reach for this Glow Cocoa Hydrating Mist from Huda Beauty. This is new, you guys. I just got it in the mail. Basically, this is a priming spray, a setting spray, and also a refresh spray. So I'm gonna set my powder with this Glow Cocoa Mist. Mmm. Mm. The mist is very fine, but the first time you spray it does kind of go a little splat. Not the most perfect mist, but the smell is nice. It's definitely not scentless, but I am someone who likes the coconut summery type of scent. This feels very fresh to me. Definitely hydrating. Next, you guys, I have some foundations that I want to test out. These are from the Lip Bar. I talked about this brand in my black owned makeup brands tutorial. I'm a fan of the Lip Bar. I have been a fan for years. Their liquid lipsticks are actually some of the first First liquid lipsticks that I've ever tried. And now they have so much more than just lip products. They have a foundation. So I got a couple shades here, 2.02, 2.01, and 2.03. Off the bat, 2.03 looks right to me. Now this is a skin serum foundation with hyaluronic acid and Irish moss extract. It has a built-in brush that you can remove fairly easily if you wanna wash it. So that's kind of cool. But I'm gonna test it out with the brush. Kind of genius packaging actually. Did you see how easy that was? Huh. You know what, I think you just press this button here on the bottom. Oh, there it goes, cute. Oh, that one pump released enough foundation, I think, to cover my entire face. This shade, 2.03, is leaning a pinch orange for my liking, but you know what? I already committed to it, so I think I'm gonna try to make it work. Now, this is a foundation that actually sets pretty quickly, and the brush is too small for my liking. So I think I'm gonna reach for another shade. Let's go for the 2.02. This one seems a lot lighter. I'm basically gonna apply that to the center of my face.
but then I'm gonna spread it out with a bigger brush. Aside from the shades, the texture and finish of this foundation is really beautiful. Although both 2.03 and 2.01, I don't know if it's oxidizing or if it's just like leading a little pinky orange on me. While we're here, might as well just try out the 2.01 shade. Oh, this one doesn't look like the right match for me. Do you see that? This one is just like really, really, really peachy. The coverage is really impressive. Now, from what I understand, this is a newer product from the lip bar, but I'm generally a fan of hyaluronic foundations because they seem to really plump the skin. In my mirror, I definitely look a little weird. Like this is definitely not my shade, but in my monitor, it looks really pretty. What do you guys think? Comment below. Let's add some concealer. Just using my regular Tarte Shape Tape. I always feel like whenever I try new foundations or whenever I'm wearing a shade that I'm not really sure about, I find that reaching for my actual concealer shade or a concealer that works really well for me, kind of helps to balance everything out. Blend it out to make it work. Cool. Next up, the usual, just a bit of Pat McGrath under eye setting powder. I like to use the lightest one just because I find that it helps to brighten and bring everything together. Basically, I just add this to my nostril folds, to my under eye for a little brightening action, and also in between my brows. This area tends to get very shiny. Everything else I'm just gonna leave alone for now. Why do I look so fresh? Is it the hair? Is it the cute little dangly earrings? I don't know, but I like myself today. Oh, I have another thing from the lip bar that I want to test out, and it is their Fresh Glow Bronzer and Blush Duo. Oh, that is so cute. So here we have the bronzer on the top. First of all, their packaging is so dope, so signature to them. And then you flip that over, and there's a nice shimmery peachy blush. Mm little shimmery for my preference, maybe a little too metallic. It's almost like a highlighter, I would say, but very, very pigmented and very smooth. And then we also have another compartment with a little cute brush. Boom, boom. I'm gonna go for the bronzer. We'll just go with a big old brush. Morphe RO is what I've been using in my past couple of videos. Looks really pretty and olive to me. It has some tiny gold flecks, which I like. Just gonna kind of like slap my forehead with it and then I'm gonna roll it across my forehead. So first I slapped and then I rolled. Just a new technique that I've learned fairly recently. I've been doing a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of Zoom meetings with different brands, with their makeup artists. And this is how I've been sort of updating my makeup techniques. I actually find that I'm learning more at the virtual events rather than at actual physical events. Maybe it's because there's no alcohol involved. Cut. What do you think of my foundation real quick? I like it. Okay, it's a little yellow. I think it looks good. I like the fact it's mattified. It looks pretty, it looks pretty matte. Kind of pretty, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you for your opinion. Yeah, I like it. Huh, so I'm not alone. Lee actually liked my foundation application. My forehead looks nice. I think that's due to the bronzer, but the bronzer is really, really pretty. I like the olive, the true tan undertone of this bronzer. And I like the fact that it has a little bit of a gold reflect so that when you turn, it's just like, I like that. Okay, lip bar coming through. All right, so now I'm thinking I want just a little bit of powder to chisel out this bronzer. So I'm gonna go back to Catrice, just pack a little bit on this hourglass brush and maybe just brighten this area a pinch just to separate my bronzer application from my jawline. I don't know if I needed that, but I just felt like I wanted it. So I went for it. This is the terrible packaging one. I hate this packaging. Jesus, it just will not listen. Oh, you guys, we have some newness from Fenty and I'm gonna go ahead and reach right for it. We we have a new Diamond Bomb all over Diamond Veil. So this is Diamond Bomb number three. And this is what it looks like. It is so absolutely delicious looking. Holy crap. Oh my God, oh my God. That is just divinity. So, 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 so gorgeous. You see that? That's really pretty. Right, I'm gonna set that aside because we also have a body lava. Same shade, cognac candy. Oh, this is summer in a bottle. I'm a huge fan of Fenty's body lavas in general. I own all the shades and I do like to wear them on the beach just for that beautiful glow. The only thing with this product is that it is very sticky and it's hard to remove. You don't just gotta scrub. You gotta use a makeup wipe and then scrub and then take a shower and then scrub some more. I did do a review 
on that product so you guys can check it out up here if you want to. But it's such a beautiful, brilliant, luminous, wet type of glow that it's almost worth it to me. I think for the beach or for the pool, if you really wanna take that photo and be super luminous in your photo, this is the product to use. However, if you want something that's less sticky, these diamond bombs have been great. I have a feeling this is gonna be my new favorite color. Just using Fenty's all over brush and expose myself for a sec. Oh yeah, stunning. Oh, you know what else I've been loving? I've been loving this Catrice Sungasm Face and Body Highlighter. This thing is massive. I feel like it's almost the size of my face and my face is very, very large. It's great to apply on your shoulders for a little summery glow. Like this one is super shiny. Do you see that? It's like bam in your face type of highlighter. Wouldn't necessarily use this on my face. I feel like it's almost too much, but on bony parts like my shoulders or my shins, it looks so, so, so beautiful. Beautiful. So I've been loving this one a lot. And from what I know, it's actually pretty inexpensive. I'm telling you guys, Catrice is a sleeper. So although this is not a first impression, I just wanted to let you know that I love this one and I'll probably definitely include it in my favorites video for the month of June, coming soon. Ooh, we got this new Lorac Luxe Diamond Golden Hour Palette. So this is a palette full of highlighters. Is this not stunning? Kawaii, St. Lucia, Capri, Bali, Tulum, and Saint-Tropez. I've been to Tulum, have been to Bali, have been to St. Lucia, but I've been to Kauai, Capri, and Saint-Tropez. Merci. Ooh, let's go for Kauai. Kauai seems like a very champagne-y shade of highlighter. Actually, let's watch them all. Here's Kauai, here's St. Lucia, here's Capri. Blinding, you guys, like literally blinding. Wow, that is gorgeous. All right, let's do Bali, Tulum, and Saint-Tropez. Ooh, absolutely stunning highlighters. Holy crap, let's see how they apply. Kauai. Here we come. Oh, these are some spotlight glow type of highlighters. Okay, Lorac, I had no idea it was like that. It was beautiful. I guess I'm going for golden glowing beach goddess today. $35, that's it? Guys, I think this is a great palette for $35. I'm really, really impressed at first impression. And I like how finely milled this highlighter is. It's not really like competing with the rest of my face. It's just blending into everything very nicely. Oh, I did just notice that my bronzer was looking kind of patchy, so. You know what, let's refresh in that with that Huda Beauty. Hmm. Got a few more things that I want to test out and try out. Got this Nabla Secret Palette. So, so pretty. First time opening it up. Oh my God, you guys, how stunning. I was not expecting all that. I was honestly expecting like six giant pans, but this is promising. I don't know anything about Nabla Cosmetics. I should definitely look them up. Before I apply that, I actually have a new eyeshadow primer from KVD Vegan Beauty. This one is called High Impact Eyeshadow Primer. Apparently you're supposed to shake it really well then press this little button on the top. Let's go for it. Ooh. Feels a little oily to me, but I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. It's kind of new and different. I've never really seen anything like that before. Let's add a little something here. How about this color here called Ghibli? Ghibli? I like that this palette is very lightweight. I don't know if it's the palette or the primer, but it seems like the eyeshadow is really sticking, but not really blending. Maybe I was supposed to wait for that primer to dry. So that kind of sucks. Do you see how it applied very patchy-like? Ooh. Let's see if it's dry on this side, more or less. I don't know, also applying kind of very, very patchy. Girl, what is you doing? Clean fluffy brush, Sigma tapered blending. We are going to whisk that away. We are going to blend that out. I don't know, I feel like that eyeshadow primer was definitely not for the preliminary step. Maybe perhaps it would be good for gluing on some glitter or some shimmery shades for that high impact, but I don't know. I didn't get any instructions and I just thought this was a regular eyeshadow primer. Kind of pissed right now. Almost ruined my eyeshadow, but now it looks like there's no eyeshadow there anyway. Okay. You know what guys? I have this uh, Lorac Luxe Diamond Eye Gloss Trio in Sunset and it has the most gorgeous liquid eyeshadows. They look super metallic. I was very excited to see these in uh, my recent unboxing and I honestly hope that these are really good. This shade here called Yacht Club just looks so insanely prismatic and so so beautiful. Like a purple blue green gold type of chrome pigment. All right let me swatch that. Oh my oh my. It actually looks really purple. Then we turn to the side it kind of shifts green. I am going to paint that across the lid. Kind of like in a thick liner style and wing it out. Hmm. I don't know, not as high impact as I imagined it would be. A little bit more subdued than I wanted it to be. Let's see what happens if I blend it out. Oh, it's actually not something that blends easily. So you know what? I'm gonna add a bit more of that on top and then I'm gonna try to quickly blend that. 
a little better, but not the easiest to use, I will admit. This is actually probably something that would work great as an eyeshadow topper. So if you already have a smoky eye going, plop this on for a little bit of dimension and sparkle. Oh, I know what this is reminding me of. This is kind of like an eye polish. All right, kind of cute. I said kind of. There's this really pretty shade in here called Rosemary. And it's like this shimmery dark teal. I'm gonna try to use that to, I don't know, make something out of this eye creation because I still want it to work. I'm gonna add that to, ooh, that's actually really pretty. So I'm adding that to the outer portion of this creation just to kind of emphasize the outer corner. I'm gonna do the same thing to my other eye. Okay, so I took the liberty to do my brows real quick in between cuts. I also added a little bit of this shade here called Fantasize to kind of make a better gradient with my lid. I'm gonna use the same shade Yacht Club from Lorac and I'm going to line my lower lash line and connect that shade to the outer portion and then quickly blend out with that shade Rosemary and also Fantasize. Cute. Looks like a very glamorous pool day situation on my face. I'm gonna add a bit of this shade here called Play Hard. This is like a pale shimmery white slash teal. I'm gonna stamp that to my inner corner for a little mermaid effect. Really cute there, I like that. I'll also do that right here in the brow arch, but just a pinch more blended out. Oh, hell no. Did you just see what happened to my eye? Look at that, you guys. Product has completely removed itself. Oh no, it was looking so cute. Wait, what is actually happening? So I was trying to remove that very unsexy peeled part and in removing it I noticed that the shimmery particles became very dry kind of like sand and in doing so I was able to spread them around and to cover the part that was ruined So I guess what I'm saying is I was somehow able to fix it but I'm still very confused. I'm not really sure if it's going to separate again. I'm not sure if I should have let the product dry. Basically, I'm just not sure about this product altogether. It looks really, really, really pretty in the tube, but the application is definitely very tricky. And it's not something that you can just grab if you've never grabbed it before and hope for it to work. No, no, no. I think you have to play around with it and really learn how to make it work. I love first impressions videos. <laughs> I feel like these are the perfect videos to showcase how much you truly have have to play around with makeup and make it work. Even if you're a makeup artist, even if you're someone who's very well in the know like I am, you're not gonna get it right the first time, not with every single product. Here we have a whole bunch of new glosses from Lorac. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous packaging and colors. Never tried them before, but they do look really, really pretty. Some of them have a diamond lip gloss feel, like this blue shade here. Oh, that would be interesting. Very futuristic with my space buns. Others have more of a solid color type of feel. There are some neutrals in here. Also a really nice gold shade. Wow. Why do I want to reach for this? Why do I want to try this? It's actually really pretty. For those of you who would love a blue, super shimmery, super glittery type of gloss, this is probably one of the best versions that I've seen of this type of gloss. It just looks really prismatic and really pretty on the lips. Obviously, it's a vibe. It's definitely like a space age type of look. So although cute, it's not necessarily something that I want to go for today. So I'm going to remove that real quick, but I will say this was pretty. Instead, I think I just want to go for something simple. How about this? Like a nice pink, cute vibe. Let's do that. Got perfect lip liner for this shade. This is Laura Mercier Plumberry, kind of like a nudie pink. Cute. This shade is called Vibes, and Vibes is what I'm going for. It's vibing, but it's not really vibing with me right now. This is a little too pale for my liking. I far prefer a deeper pink, something that matches my lips a little more. Let's see if this one works. Pink Sands. Pink Sands is like the sheer shimmery version of Vibes. And I think I like this one a lot better. You know, this one's really nice. It's neutral enough that it's not competing with the eyes, but it's pretty enough to have a statement, I guess. Okay, quickly gonna add some mascara. Gonna go for a waterproof formula as I always do. This one is from Pixie. Ooh, did you guys see 
Pixie's new Clarify skincare collection for acne, for those of us with acne prone skin. Kind of excited about that one. Just got it in the mail today, along with some rose. Thank you, Pixie. And also some chocolates. I am excited to try that one out. Gotta curl those bottoms too. But you know what? I can only curl the bottoms with this specific Laura Mercier lash curler because it opens up a lot wider than most other lash curlers. I'll show you the difference between the Laura Mercier and the Lancome. Uh, yeah. Laura Mercier opens up like double the size. Okay, cute. I'm gonna do one more thing, and hopefully this is going to be a good thing and not a bad thing. I'm gonna take this brush, Morphe M521, kind of like a big but narrow blending brush. I'm gonna reach into this plummy neutral shade called Contigo, and I'm just gonna gent like go over the border of this eyeshadow shape. Now that this whole eye look has had a chance to set, just want a little bit of definition, just like literally above. And I'm also gonna just pull that out in a wing like that. Love that, that was a good move, Mariam. You did it, girl, you did it. You made it work for you. Do that again on this eye and hopefully it'll work out. All right, that is pretty, 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 pretty good. Not great, but it's pretty good. Pretty good for a first impressions, first trial type of makeup look. I am pretty pleased with it. Obviously, I have absolutely nowhere to go, but for the sake of this video, I dressed up for you guys. Let's see, let's kind of go over everything new that I tried today that I liked. So first and foremost, I was a huge fan of this Lorac Luxe Diamond Golden Hour Palette. I thought for $35, these highlighters were really, really buttery, easy to use, very pigmented, but they also didn't look chalky on the skin. They look like a glow from within, but a very poppin' glow from within. So. This one is Mariam approved. I like it and I'm gonna continue reaching for it. I also was pleasantly surprised by this Nabla Secret Palette. I've heard of this brand, but I haven't really heard heard of this brand. I've never really used them before. This color compilation wasn't something that immediately drew me in. It was like a little bluesy, a little too cool for the vibe that I was going for, but it actually ended up working out really well and it ended up helping my makeup look. All the shades that I tried applied great and and I have nothing bad to say about this palette. I am going to continue reaching for it and I can't wait to play around with it again. Next up, the Skin Serum Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid from the Lip Bar. I actually thought this was a really, really nice foundation. I didn't exactly have my shade here in front of me. I think my undertone is a pinch different, but overall it looks really lovely on my skin. Looking at my face closely, I don't see any pores. I don't see any imperfections. I do see some fallout from the eyeshadow though. It didn't stick to my foundation, so that's good. Really Really, I thought this was another pleasant surprise. This is a new product for the lip bar. They are a brand that started out with lip products. So the fact that they're venturing out into the foundation world, into complexion world is really awesome. And this is something that I'm gonna continue reaching for. I need to get my shade and wear it some more. Ah, love this bronzer. Loved, loved, loved this bronzer. The shade is gorgeous, you guys, gorgeous. For someone who's a medium complexion, for someone who's already on the tan side, this is something that is super flattering and just beautiful. It brought the whole look together. Next up, Cognac Candy from Fenty Beauty is gorgeous. I thought that it was just the most shimmering, splendid type of sparkle for the body or for the face, and I'm a fan. I also like these Lorac glosses. The blue one in particular surprised me because this is not a color that I would normally reach for, but it looked surprisingly really fresh on the lips. Now, onto some of the things that I wasn't too, 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 too keen on. Well, this KVD Beauty Shake Primer was just weird. I didn't get it. I don't know if it actually primed my lids. I don't know if it helped my eye eyeshadow adhere better. It was different, but not in a good way. I also, unfortunately, was not a huge fan of this Lorac Diamond Eye Gloss. This was just not a hit with me. It was weird. It was difficult to apply. It peeled off. It felt like sandpaper. Although I think I was able to make it work and the colors are really gorgeous, I needed a lot of help from other products, specifically from the Secret Palette from Nabla Cosmetics. Catrice Sungasm is great. Get it if you can. Oh yeah, and this Huda Beauty Glow Cocoa Mist, also kind of nice. Not something that I'm immediately super impressed by, but but not a bad product. I'm gonna continue reaching for it and I'm gonna continue using it. So that's it. Those are my two final scents, more like 10, 15, you get my drift. I will see you guys in my next video. I am zooming on out so that you can click on my next two videos. Do it, I dare you. I love you guys. See you soon. Mwah.